That was good. Hey look, it's like the most self-conceited thing you could do on YouTube, a Q&A video. But I'm gonna do it because I feel like you're supposed to do it like every year or so. So I took to YouTube, the YouTube post, told you guys to ask me questions, and you did. So I'm pretty much gonna answer all of them, or most of them. Not everyone's appropriate. That was a good intro. Before we even move on, yes, I got glasses. I don't even know like where I'm supposed to stand or film. I feel like I have to like kind of face this way when I film, otherwise it's like, look, things in my eyes. I really should have went with non-reflective. The first question is from Jeremy Cricket and he says, have you ever discovered anything in the wild that really pulled at your heartstrings, maybe even brought a tear to your eye? I would say as far as physical media or looking at a video game or any sort of toy, no. But I will say, talking with people in the community that watch the show who have told us stories about their life, technically that counts as finding something in the wild. And that's brought many tears to my eyes because you guys bring some of the big stories sometimes about how you guys watch us. And that's awesome. Lewis Panda Bomb 112 says, how do you become part of the squat? That's a loud airplane. It's flying really low. There never really was like a set way that anybody became part of the squad besides Ricky and I and kind of complex the early days. Gabo and Mikey just kind of became part of it through times, good friends and you know, other people bouncing in and around too that just friends that we hang with. Game nerds. If you're a nerd and you like to talk on a camera, let's do it. A Orozco says, who's the best gamer out of the squad? Ooh, I like this question. I would say each one of them has their own forte. I'd say complex, probably like the Zelda open world top down type of games. I would say I'm the best at side scrollers and platformers. I would say Mikey's the best at sports games. I would say Gabo's the best at like single player, third person type games. And I'd say Ricky's probably a good blend of him and Gabo kind of fighting for the spot of who's better at fighting games. That's what I would say from playing with a lot of people all of the guys in the squad. RPG Fanboy says, what are some games you got rid of in the past that ended up becoming really rare slash expensive? I've said it before on a podcast and I'll say it again. Little Samson, Bubble Bubble 2, <gasps> Panic Restaurant. I had all of those games, Mighty Final Fight. I had them all when I was a kid because we were poor, we got the NES late. Those were the games that were out at the time. Those were the, the later NES releases and yeah, we had them all, and uh, we sold them all a long time ago and got some random Super Nintendo stuff. Super Nintendo stuff was awesome, but looking back on price, <laughs> oh boy. Sean Johnson says, what are some of your holy grails you have yet to find? Wait, holy crap, I need to find that. Interestingly enough, it wouldn't be like a video game particular. I know this is kind of random. I've seen like complete sets of like He-Man toys at somewhere, like a whole setup of them. But for me, I would love to find a complete setup of original Batman, like animated series time toys. I had a lot, I'll probably say almost all of those when I was a kid. I would love to find somebody who's just getting rid of that whole set. Like I have all these Batman toys, they're all one thing, toss me a few hundred bucks and there is what it is. I don't wanna have to like look for them in particular like one by one. I feel like I will pick them up that way, but my holy grail would just be to walk up, see all of those complete, ready to go, the whole set. That would that'd make me a happy boy. <laughs> uh, I'm Batman. Uh. That's not how it goes. It is freezing in here, holy. <sighs> Can you see my breath? David Hill says, how is the Sega Master System collecting going? It's going okay, I'll admit. I have traded a lot of things in and out to buy other, a lot of this arcade stuff. I bought kind of trading out some of my Master System stuff or whatnot. You know, that's just the way collecting goes sometimes. You're hot for something, then you're not, then you're hot for it again, and then you go for something else, and then you want an arcade, and then you might want to go for Nintendo. But then you're like, ooh, I remember Super Nintendo. But then you're like, ooh, that Neo Geo Pocket Color is pretty cheap, I might get that instead. Oh, darn it, not another one. Let's see what they said. The PS1 says, what is everyone's favorite game franchise of all time? Well, I saw this question last night, so I text the guys. I text it to Ricky. Best franchise, best franchise, best franchise of all time for Gabo, Street Fighter, Mikey. What up, bro? Smash Bros, Ricky, Zelda, and for me, Mario. I know it's like a basic answer, but I've found the most enjoyment overall with Super Mario games. I absolutely love them, and Complex, he wouldn't give me a real answer, and he said Fortnite. 
Wow. Moises, I think it's Moises. Moises Lav, Moises Landerbird, eh? Moises Landerbird. Who has completed the most games out of the squad without using a Game Genie or Game Shark? I'll be honest, I'll say for retro games, I'd say probably me. And I'd say for newer games, I would say Gabo for sure. He has the most uh, amount of time that he can allot towards doing that. He doesn't uh, necessarily have small children he has to take care of when he comes home. So, get it Gabo! Rifo was playing with Dick. Tracy. Samuel Carrillo's Movie Corner says, what was your game consoles you got? I think there was some grammar misspellings. Favorite game console you got? Super Nintendo, if that was your question for me, Super Nintendo. <coughs> Brian Koitke, what famous person would you want to go on a game hunt or expo with? Ooh, Paul McCartney, as far as outside video game world, I would wanna go with Paul McCartney. I know he actually has some love for retro video games. I think in Norm's recent video, he said that Paul McCartney contacted Shigeru Miyamoto when they finished Super Mario Brothers 3. I would like that, I'm also a huge music guy. Secondly, my second answer would be Shigeru Miyamoto. I would love to go game hunting with him. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine the stories of me finding a certain game and him being like, let me tell you a little fun nugget of history about when I developed that game. Or even his opinion on collecting other things, you know, if you would get excited for like collectibles and toys and knickknacks and stuff like that. Rock Solid Productions says, why don't you have that bald guy on that went with you to the 2018 Portland Retro Gaming Expo anymore? He was awesome. Paul Roach says, what other hobbies do you guys have outside of retro gaming? I didn't ask the guys this question, so speaking for myself, uh, definitely skateboarding. I wouldn't say I'm like any bit particularly amazing at it, but I do love skateboarding. I'm actually going to do it today with Andy, our old cameraman's son, Kevin. <laughs> Retro Rick, one of my favorite channels out there, by the way, guys. Favorite childhood toy you wanted but never got? Let me be honest with you. As a kid, uh and I'll say this in a prideful way if you want, I was never a spoiled kid at all um, in any way, shape, or form. I didn't really ask for much because we were so poor, I didn't expect anything. So any of the toys that I genuinely like wanted inside of my heart, I would tell my parents and they would find a way to get it for me, whether my dad would find some random side job, work some crazy overtime somewhere, again, not making really any money, but kind of get me what I, what I wanted. Looking back, of course, there's things that I wish I would have wanted when I was a kid, if that makes sense. But as a kid, I never had these like crazy desires to get things that I knew were unobtainable for my family. Red Sea Gaming Life says, if you could swap one gaming company that currently has a console with a company that doesn't make consoles anymore, which company would it be, i.e. Sega, Panasonic, 3DO, ETC? Ooh, so I have to take out one of the companies today that makes consoles and replace it for one maybe that used to. I'll probably get a lot of hate for this, but I'm only gonna choose out of the big three, which would be Nintendo, you know, Sony, or Microsoft. I'm gonna get a lot of hate, but it's just my opinion. I would take out Sony and I would put back in Sega. If I had to choose, I would love to see some more Sega style brawlers, arcade style stuff, but made by Sega. I know a lot of people do that nowadays, but I'd love to see Sega. I still like Sony. I just don't play PlayStation 4 as much as I do Xbox games. Cajun Tacos says, what are the many obstacles in planning that you are regularly faced with in order to get the best content while game hunting at flea markets convention in general? Thank you. Yeah, doing the NES Pursuit quite frankly is a pain to go game hunting. That's why I like doing the expansion packs a lot with you know cell phone footage and just kind of using that because it's kind of free for all, whatever. But when we film NES Pursuit videos, from getting everyone together to finding everyone at least like one item is kind of what we like, like try to get someone to find at least one item that they can love and talk about, um, getting everyone together for narration and then me going into the editing process. B-roll is huge, it takes up a lot of time. We actually lose a lot of deals because of B-roll. We do it all on the spot. You know will find something, Ricky finds something, then I gotta get all the B-roll of him doing it. I gotta watch all the footage when we're going somewhere else, or when I go home, I gotta watch all the footage back. I write notes on WhatsApp, I send it to everybody of what we found and whatnot so we can start working on narration. We go film narration. All in all, long story short, doing an NES Pursuit video for me, as far as work for me, getting it all done from start to finish, uh, an NES Pursuit video probably takes around, I'd say 40 to 60 hours of work, uh, including editing is, you know, a ton, a ton of that time so yeah it's a lot of work which is why I don't do them every day I know it's funny when people are like oh you would just do them for fun anyway you're right I would but I wouldn't like 
push them out as often as I do. It's hard, it's a pain in the butt sometimes, but I love it. Vintomania says, Masters of the Universe, Thundercats, Real Ghostbusters, or TMNT, you have to start collecting one of these toy lines, what would it be? Well, of those, I already do collect TMNT. I would say Thundercats. I don't collect Thundercats, but I really like Thundercats. I love, uh, I love the cartoon a lot. I don't know necessarily that much about the toys, but I would love to kind of get into them. Mikey Sun says, how many hours do you game a week on average? And how often do you play couch co-op with friends and family? I'd say personally, I play probably, I'd say about 30 to minutes to an hour a day. I don't do math, so whatever that equals. And I'd say the rest of us kind of do the same, except Gabo. Gabo plays a lot, I'd say like three hours a day. Again, he doesn't have little ones at home that he's neglecting, and so it's... <sighs> Mikey Sun also said, what is the most difficult game of all time that you have beaten? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what people consider hard. It's different to everyone. Honestly, I beat Cuphead on the hardest setting with uh, no death run. I didn't think it was that hard. I don't think Contra is very hard. Ninja Gaiden gave me a good run for my money. I'm good at side scrolls and platformers. Ninja Gaiden kind of kicked my butt, but I beat it. Whatever. The Retro Lecter says, with the amount of times you've, Riff, slapped Ricky over the years, who has softer skin, Ricky or Gabo? Ricky definitely has softer skin. He really, Ricky has got that baby skin. If you've ever seen him when he's like freshly shaved, he literally looks like, like Buddha. There comes another airplane. How long am I filming so far? 17 minutes, oh my gosh. The next question is actually from the button bashers and they also say, does Gabble really have soft skin? Not really that soft, if I'm honest. If 10 is the softest and one is like leather, he's like a good, uh, Six. Gabo Gabo says, what happened with the pixel glasses? I just stopped wearing them. I don't know, there was no really reason. Rhinor says, least favorite games. Oh boy. As far as least favorite games, the way I would classify that is not necessarily bad games, but I would say I would only be able to pick games that I was really looking forward to and then was disappointed by because games that aren't good that I didn't really care about, I wasn't looking forward to them, so that it didn't, didn't disappoint me, so I didn't really care. I'm gonna get hate for this one too, but you know, it's gotta be honest time. <laughs> didn't really like Bloodstained as much as everyone else did. I played it, just never got, was able to get into it. I heard a lot of good things. I know a lot of people probably love it. I just didn't care about it much. I was like, cool, that was that was fine, but to each their own. Huh. Nivex Gameplays says, will there ever be a Riffet sequel? You speak of Riffet, do you? Now presenting Riffet. <laughs> My little buttercup has the sweetest smile. Dear little buttercup. Sometimes I question my decisions. Steven Walterhouse says, my wife always says my collecting is actually hoarding. I argue that it is not, of course. How do your significant others feel about your collections? Man, I'll be honest. We talk to a lot of people that have the same problem and I, I, I can't relate uh, because we are so lucky to have wives that are so supportive of what we do. They love us doing our hobbies. I think that what's important too is always, to, I'm not saying this isn't happening for you, Stephen Walterhouse, but just make sure that you know, you're able to have your hobbies and do your things that make you happy. And then you're also allowing her to do her hobbies and different things or even encourage her to find things that will keep her happy. You know, maybe things she did when she was younger in high school that she might want to go back and do, whether it's tennis or a sport or anything, whatever it may be, make sure she's also allowed that gateway because I notice a lot of times when I talk to people like this, their significant other doesn't have this outlet and they kind of can resent the fact that their husband or wife or whoever does have this. I also just realized this is off. Hey. Don't you go off like that again. There's still quite a few more of these, so I'm gonna go fast, all right? Dallin Verhage says, my question is, when you kind of get bored of collecting for one thing, do you later feel like you've been neglecting it and decide to get back into it purely out of guilt? I've never played something I got into just out of guilt, but I have to admit, I have gotten bored of collecting certain things, and like I mentioned earlier, I'll sell it or trade it so I can collect for something else. Like I said earlier with Sega Master System, trading stuff so I can get arcades. You know, I've traded different uh, Wii games that I was super into that I was like, oh, I'm gonna collect for this really hard. And I'm like, oh, but actually I wanna start collecting this type of VHS or this or that. So when it comes to collecting, never feel like you have to do anything because that's what people do. And if you don't collect this way or that way, just have fun. You know, it's collecting. That's the whole purpose of all this, to be to embrace the darkness. 
Mark and Otto says, every holiday break, I do a playthrough of Chrono Trigger. Do you have a yearly gaming ritual? I don't have a ritual, but I definitely play Super Mario Brothers 2 every year, no matter what. Lucid says, wait, what happened to the game quest? The Nintendo Switch. RPG Tour Guide says, Q&A time. How about this one? What video game power-up would you want to have access to in the real world? I love that question. For me, it would be power up from Altered Beast. Yes, there's other answers that would probably benefit you more, but I think just taking that cool transformation to a big beefy animal of some sort with powers that walks on two legs, that'd be awesome. Jetter Jr. 28, I think that's how you say it, says, thanks for being awesome, funny content creators. This was for someone else. What is everyone's favorite and most nostalgic N64 game? I asked the squad and survey says. Mikey says Smash Bros slash Ocarina of Time. Ricky says Star Fox, Mario, and Ocarina. Come on, Ricky, that's three answers. Gabo says Star Fox 64, and I say Mario 64. And Complex said Beetle Adventure Racing. I don't know if he was dead serious, but I know he loves that game. Right, I'm not Raptor 2569 just started yelling words and saying rare. That's what he does in every comment. I like it. B Sharp 803 says, The Wizard or Last Starfighter? The Wizard. Toddzilla says, What's the worst part of collecting? From my experience, I would have to say storage space and money. It can get expensive to be a collector of anything. I actually like the money aspect, not that I like spending money, but I feel like if we had unlimited funds, we would just collect dry and nothing would really matter because we're just collecting for the heck of it. There would be no rush of trying to find things at a good deal. For me, it'd be storage, absolutely. Il Gore says, what's your go-to trick when skateboarding and how long have you been riding? Uh, I rode all through junior high and high school and after that, my go-to trick would be backside 5-0, shove it out. I used to do it off things like six stair ledges. I was really into skateboarding. There was a time where I was really good at skateboarding. Uh, out of the squad, uh, there was a time where me and Andy were actually very good at skateboarding. We were some of the best people at our school, but uh, you know, as time goes on, I'm getting old and tired. Now kickflips are my go-to trick. Just like, oh, there's that. I'll go kickflip that three, sir. Whatever. Side Dragon GM says, have you guys ever seen a movie or a game that you never heard of or advertised? I know I have, like I've been to expos where I'm like, oh, I've never seen that game before. And people are like, you don't know about that game. It's been out since 1982. And I'm like, oh, never heard of it. <laughs> Pro Gamer M, what are your favorite horror games? Ooh, I can kind of speak for me and Ricky, uh, Resident Evil, Silent Hill. And both of us, Silent Hill, blink, wins the match. Zombie JLT1 says, what game slash system started you on playing games and then later collecting the NES for sure? The NES, I mean, look at our name, the NES Pursuit. That's like where our bread and butter was. Not my favorite console of all time, Super Nintendo, then Nintendo. But that's kind of what got me into wanting to collect as well with our name, obviously, the NES Pursuit. Which is funny now because we don't buy NES games that often. It's, you know, all different stuff. It's the, the Nostalgia Pursuit. <laughs> Omega Wolf 45 says, hey Riff, is there anything that you had as a kid that you wish you still had that exact item, game, toy system, whatever? Yeah, my Rob the Robot. Man, I used to play with it all the time and we used to love Gyromite. I know there's not like a ton of love for Gyromite, but I used to love that game and actually genuinely play it with Rob all the time. We were fascinated by it. Richard Mincy says, do you ever feel like you're getting burnt out on game collecting regret buying stuff you don't play or use. Kind of like the question earlier. I don't get burnt out on game collecting, but I have in the past. The best way to do it, again, is mix things up. Collect for different things, watch different 90s commercials, get inspired by things that were maybe from your past, from nostalgic or retro times, and you'll find yourselves being like, oh, that'd be fun to collect for. You know, that'd be awesome. For me, Mighty Ducks, you know, stuff like that. I watched some commercials last night, and I was like, that'd be fun to start collecting those toys. Mix it up, keep it fresh, keep it fun. Just like marriage. <laughs> Core Kid says, serious question. Are you guys getting paid for the unofficial channel showing all of your videos? Just curious. No, we're not. And some of them have like a lot of views, like 20,000 views or 30,000 views, but that's okay. I don't care because when we deleted our old channel, I wiped clean, clean slate away. And I'll be honest, it was actually refreshing when years later, I was like, I wonder if those videos still exist to kind of see some people, I'm guessing some old school fans uh, wanted to keep them going. So if anything, thank you. And hey, thanks for people that are watching them. They have a pretty good amount of views. Only a few questions left. Tellboy2011 says, if you could exist in any game universe, which would it be and why? Ooh, probably the Mushroom Kingdom but then Bowser attacks. Silent Hill, definitely Silent Hill. Bill P says, do you have any tips on starting a channel? Besides anything obvious, what are some of the personal benefits of being a YouTuber? Now I could give you all the stuff that everyone gives you, like make sure it's something you're passionate about, blah, 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 blah. These are all true. Those are all true statements, but everybody tells you. The 
best benefits really honestly 100% is being able to express yourself. That's it. For me, it's expressing what I want to do. I'm a video editor and I love video games. I got to put those things out and it just, it just stopped recording on me. I don't even remember what I was saying, so I'm gonna end there. Good community, and you get to express yourself. <laughs> Kales Bro says, is there a game that you love and others hate, and you'll defend that game, no matter what? Yeah, there's a couple like that. Uh, I know Bionic Commando and the Xbox 360. Uh, there's some old school Nintendo games that I know a lot of people don't like. Heck, Ricky and I, and I've said it before, we genuinely loved and had a good experience playing Cheetah Men 2. I wouldn't say it's a good game, but I enjoyed the heck out of the game. I can't think of any others off the top of my head, so I'm gonna say the first game I see. Huh. Aigimaru! That's the game. Actually, it looks really boring. Question for you, Riff, from Javier Martinez. How did you meet Gabo? We've talked about this in other videos, but funny enough, he was a fan at an expo. Dressed as Negan, and he's like, oh, Hey, excuse me, sir. I watch your show. It's so good to meet you. Can you sign this thing for me? I don't remember what I signed, but I signed something. And little did we know, he'd become Gabo the Great. Why do people like you? I don't know. Probably because of my beautiful soft skin. Thank you, Riff. He's all right. Last question comes from Eric Plunk, and he says, what aspect from gaming today would blow little early 90s Riff's mind if he knew about it back then? I'd say graphics, because I remember back then, graphics was such a big deal back then. Nowadays, I'll be honest, I don't really care about graphics. Gameplay is far more important, but back little early 90s riff, yeah, graphics were everything. And I remember seeing games like Mortal Kombat and genuinely having a thought process in my head like, We've peaked. There is no higher. And then, and then I remember seeing commercials. I don't know how much later, a few years, whatever the timeline would be, for full motion video FMV sequences in some games. And I was like, it's real life. That's it. We're done. That's, that's, that's the top of the line. I remember having the conversation with my brother, Nathan, like, that's it. There is no higher. Obviously, we've gotten much more sophisticated in graphics, but I thought that was it. So if I would have seen, like, PT or or Death Stranding or Jedi Fallen Order when I was in the early 90s, I would have bet a million dollars that it was just real footage. That is all I have time for today. I read every single comment on the YouTube post page. So thank you guys for all the questions. I don't really know why you guys want to know a lot of this stuff. We're just a few dorky dudes who love video games. So thanks Complex, thanks Mikey, thanks Gabo, thanks Ricky, and thanks Riff. And thank you wives for supporting us and thank you guys for watching the dumbest dudes look for video games on the world and toys. It's definitely a lot of toys as well too. So that's it. Ba -na 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 -na. Ba -na -na -na.